If history is any indication, Brady and the Patriots shouldn't be worried or push the panic button just yet. Uh, besides Belichick's first season with the New, with New England Patriots, the Pats have started two and two or worst uh, four times, but finish at least with ten wins in each season. So, no real reason to panic. At least that's what history says. So here's the question: How much confidence do you have in the Patriots moving forward? I'll give it to you, guest debate. Oh, you know, well, I have a lot more. You know, confidence in the Patriots than everybody else does. I mean, you know, you have to look at the fact that they're still playing in the AFC East. You know, it's not like they're competing in the NFC West. I mean, obviously, they don't have the same football team that they had last year, maybe the, uh, in, the, in, in the years prior. But for the most part, I mean, I think the Patriots are going to rebound. They ran into a juggernaut the other night in, uh, in Kansas City. I don't think they were prepared. I think the first thing that stood out to me is that like, they were outcoached. Mm. I mean, if, if you look at it from an offensive and defensive standpoint, I mean, Andy Reid hit those guys with an array of formations. He did. It was a great game plan. Alex Smith got the ball out of his hands quick. It's what, it's what the Philadelphia Eagles, when Andy Reid was there, is what they called an extended running game. Mm. You know, throwing screens to uh, Jamal Charles, getting the balls up to the tight ends on bubble screens and different things like that. And the New England Patriots just couldn't tackle the run. It was not like Alex Smith dropped back and threw for three or 400 yards. They was, it was throwing hitches to Don Avery. Guys couldn't make the tackle. They still but, ran for yeah. 207, though. I know. As, as I said, they could not tackle the run. Wow. If you can't tackle the run in this league, you know, you're know just going to have a tough time. But I will say this. For the first time of his career, Tom Brady looked 37. Yeah, okay. You know what? I don't agree with that. And I don't agree with it because I saw Tom Brady look a little bit like that in a particular Super Bowl when Michael Strahan and those boys were coming after him when some dude named Plexico Burr scored the winning touchdown in that Super Bowl. I saw yeah, him tap after the dancing. luckiest I throw in history. Not again. Bring that up again. Not again. Yeah. 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 Well, not the day yeah. Yeah. Interrupt me. Yeah. Okay. I, I saw has. him <laughs> tap dancing like the late, great Gregory Hines, God rest his soul. Here's the reality of the situation. When we look at Tom Brady, Every, pointing to his age is the easy way out. Give Tom Brady protection and Tom Brady will look like Tom Brady. Give Tom Brady, put him in a position rather where he has to tap dance and he has to watch his back because he has no protection whatsoever, particularly with the absence of Logan Mankins. And what do you have? You have Tom Brady looking like Tom Brady still. This is the way he looks when he's under pressure. This is the way he looks when you don't protect him, which is why it is egregious and practically unforgivable for Coach Bill Belichick to let go of Mankins, so for them not to do everything they can to buffer their offensive line. I would be more forgiving, and please don't get me wrong, not that Bill Belichick needs my forgiveness. The man is a genius as a football coach. We all know what he can do. We know how great he is. But I'm saying, to me, more than receivers, more than a running game, the first order of business is to protect your resident star, to make sure that your offensive line is buffered. If you've got those boys up front, blocking for Tom Brady, then you'd be surprised what opportunities present themselves in the passing as well as the running game. Andy Reid did outcoach Bill Belichick. Maybe it was Josh McDaniels that got outcoached as well. Because when you've got 17 of your first 23 snaps being, uh, you know, taking place from the shotgun position, then you're basically making Tom Brady target practice. For, for, for in Tom in the loudest outdoor that's right. stadium Tom, in the That's NFL. right. For Tom Bailey, yeah. for Houston and those boys. Yeah. And that's exactly what happened because they were putting some licks on him. In the end, though, one of the things that we have to recognize, that collective bargaining agreement that they agreed to a couple of years ago that basically cut that practice time in half, let me, let me tell you why I'm going to say you need to hear it. You might not want to hear it, but coaches want to hear it. Coaches will tell you in a heartbeat when you don't have that many, when you don't have that many sessions, it takes you a while to judge, ju uh, to, 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 to gel rather. What I would say to you, Plex, is this. They got whooped. That's why. No, no. What I'm saying to you, well, they were saying this before they got whipped. I'm saying to you that if you look at the New England Patriots, the reason why I give credence to that argument is because when you let go of somebody like Mankins, okay, then what happens is, is that you've got to adjust things, and it takes time to adjust. So to me, the jury is still out on the New England Patriots. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm saying there's no way to definitively say that you nor anybody else is right about the Patriots until we give them a little bit more time to see what's up. Are you waffling on your Super Bowl pick? No. To You're win. hoping so. <laughs> New England says Stephen A. Smith will win the Super Bowl. I picked them, I picked them to win the Super Bowl to come out of the AFC. First of all, when we talk about the New England Patriots on this show, right. we're, not, we're disregarding the AFC East. I mean, they, they're getting yeah, that by default. Talking, we're talking about winning the we're Super just Bowl. Talk, we're talking about them in the AFC. How did you come up with that? Well, I came up with that because, <laughs> again, this. 
I came up with that, number one, because the Denver Broncos got punked in the Super Bowl, and I don't know if they're going to recover from that. When you take them out of the equation, obviously Cincinnati has more talent. The Baltimore Ravens didn't make the playoffs last year. Flacco didn't seem to know what to do without Peter, even though having Steve Smith there is going to help them immensely. I'm still not sold on the Pittsburgh Steelers. The San Diego Chargers are good, but at the same time, we didn't see that they were going to be this good. This was before the season began. I looked at the New England Patriots, and I said, excuse me, you got Darrell Reeves, you got Vince Wilfork, you got Gerard Mayo coming back on the defensive side of the ball. Offensively, despite some of their troubles last year, they were still third in, ter in terms of points. So I look at it from that perspective, them having Tom Brady, and I'm like, why not? Skip, you want to get in or you want Plax to respond? No, I've been enjoying Plax. Yeah, yeah, but I like it. Man. Go ahead. Yeah. I mean, Y'all can it. try. Ain't nobody running. Go Go ahead. Me too. Do you see me ducking? First, first of all, Adelman is no Wes Welker. You know, Tom Brady doesn't have a wide receiver that can I've always field, said that. That can get down the football field. That. So I don't know how you See, can sit Ammon there and Dola say, minus a longer makings and, 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 and minus, Adam, uh, minus Welker, I don't know how you can sit there and say that the New England Patriots are the favorite to win the Super Bowl over Seattle. No, no, I didn't say that. No, no. I was thinking. You said they were going to win the Super Bowl. Because I'm thinking that Seattle, well, see where I messed up is uh, that I thought uh, New Orleans, mm -hmm. New Orleans or San Fran is going to take out Seattle. Yeah. It's, it's a there. mess of now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to take out Seattle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I will break the argument here. Sure. Uh, I am loving the mind blowing overreaction to 41 to 14 on Monday night. Mm -hmm. I want the haters to hate all week. I want even some Patriot fans who should not deserve to be called Patriot fans after this week to continue to P-A-N-I-C, panic, instead of R-E-L-A-X, relax. Mm -hmm. What happened on Monday night is one of those games that happens in your National Football League. Yes. It, it just happened. It's a crazy great league, but every once in a while something happens. You're in the wrong place at the worst time, and I'm not sure the 1985 Bears could have won that game in that outdoor arena where they again set the decibel record on Monday night against that team whose coach was hot, whose quarterback was hot, whose running game was hot, the defense was hot. That, that's as good a game as you can play. They did, did they do anything wrong? I, obviously, they didn't turn the ball over one time. So does New England have problems? They're not doing one good thing right now. There's not one thing where you can hang your helmet on it and say, we do that. They show up to the game. They're, they're, they show up, but I'm not even sure they really showed show up, up mentally to that game. But everything that they're doing wrong was completely magnified and exacerbated by the home team and the home crowd. Everything went completely haywire until everybody is overreacting. And trust me, the home team this Sunday night in Foxborough will react to the overreaction because they're going to get to hear it and hear it and hear it to death. And Stephen A., I, I got to ask you this because you're always talking about how really the Patriots are America's team, not my Dallas Cowboys. Mm -hmm. Hey, hey, does any team outside of Dallas inspire more negative backlash than Tom Brady and Bill Belichick's team? Because I think they do. The, the, the negative, the, it, it's either it, more on their part, it's jealousy. Yeah. The, people are so jealous of those two because obviously Belichick leads the league in smug condescension mm -hmm. and Brady's the prettiest but, pretty boy yeah. going. So but that so, is why I say they're America's team because unlike the Dallas Cowboys, they give you a reason to be jealous of them. Okay. Dallas gives you a reason to laugh at them. Okay. Until last week. Or, or to hate them if you want to. Laugh. Yeah, I right? prefer laugh. Okay. Yeah. I prefer laugh. So, so now let's keep this in perspective. This is for me. I picked New England to win the AFC and get to the Super Bowl and lose to Seattle in the Super Bowl. I love my pick. I love it even more than I loved it before Monday night because this is the perfect jump start for the New England Patriots this year. We've seen them, as you, you pointed out. Yeah. They've had bad starts before, and they needed a, a jumping off point because Brandon Browner, and may, I, I don't know what he's got left in his tank, but he returns this week from his mm -hmm. suspension. And if you can explain to me as a receiver why Kenbrell Tompkins, who had big moments last year, and Aaron Dobson, who had big moments last year, were both healthy scratches on Monday night. Healthy scratches? It's bizarre to me. Something is going on there. Doghouse, problems, I don't know what it is. Maybe not on the same page with the quarterback. And Danny Amendola and Tom Brady are do not invite them right now. They're on the wrong page. They're, there's disrespect going back and forth. they got to figure those things out because the pieces are there to be as good as they were last year. Which is why I justify my pick. But the, the other thing is, from a critical perspective, what I want to point the finger at Belichick is this. Healthy scratches, you pointed out. 
When you know that you have compromised your quarterback with the decision you made at the offensive line at the beginning of the okay. season by moving Mankins to Tampa, okay, you need those healthy bodies not to be scratched, okay? You also don't need Gronkowski, even though he's not being targeted but so much because he's working himself back into, into being healthy. You don't need to put him in a position where you could possibly find yourself asking more of him or Edelman, as you pointed out, because he's no Wes Welker. The fact that Bill Belichick has been willing to do that, I blame two people for that. I blame Belichick, but also blame Tom Brady. Because I think one of the things that's frustrating to a receiver, and I know nothing of Kimbrell Tompkins, I know nothing of Aaron Dobson other than what they do on the field. I don't know him personally, never yeah. met him, never talked to him, don't know their personalities or whatever. But I'm just guessing. I'm guessing that if you've compromised your offensive line, if you've compromised Tom Brady's safety as a result of that, these guys, you're also compromising his ability to get them the ball. And it wouldn't surprise me at all if down the line I were to learn that they were in Belichick's doghouse because they had the temerity to actually speak I, up about it. Maybe. And Apex, so something like that. Explain that. Layer this for us, the White House situation for the Patriots. Uh, they just don't have enough play, playmakers on the outside. I mean, you, uh, you made a, a statement of, to uh, Gronkowski. I mean, they're going to have to ask him to do more. Uh, he will. I, he I, will. I, 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 I understand that he's coming back off an of injury, but he's lacing his he's, he's lacing his cleats up, yep. and he's walking out on the field on Sunday. He has to. He, That's he, just he has not to, fair, yes, Plex. That's not he fair. He has to go out and play. I'm saying you can't sit there and say, "Okay, you, you watch we're going the highlights. Wait, we're going to wait two or three weeks for Gronkowski to get his feet up." Did you watch the highlights him. last year? You saw how ugly that knee injury was. Come on, now he's back on the field. Another. I'm just saying this is If he's not healthy enough to go out and make a contribution of what you expect of him, don't put him on the field. I'm not saying. I'm not saying that he's not healthy. Oh, he's not Hold, healthy, on, so we're Hold going. on. I'm not saying he's not healthy enough to make a contribution. I'm saying if you take the other weapons away from him, that puts more responsibility on his shoulders. And health wise, he might not be ready for that. that That's is, not fair. That, that is a decision that the, that the front office made that, 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 that makes that, him that wrong. They have to, deli uh, to live with. That makes him wrong. No front office has ever been wrong about you or any other player. Front they're, offices they're, are wrong all the time. They're wrong every day. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> That's all I'm trying to say. Okay, so I have one final question. Yeah. How did this team, basically the same team, without Will Fork, without Mayo, without Gronkowski, and without the newly added Darrell Rivas, finish the year 12 and 4 last year and beat Andrew Luck uh -huh. in a playoff game 43 to 22? How'd they do that? How'd they hey, do it? One thing I can always say, you, you look back at last year, but Belichick has always had a well coached football team. But the other night, he just got out coached and they yeah. ran into a juggernaut down in Kansas City. It happened to us when we went out to San Diego and back in 2005 when Eli Manning made his first appearance in San Diego and they was just playing at a different speed yep. than what we were playing at. It wasn't yep. the fact that we weren't as good as those guys, but yep. they were just playing at a different level. All right. We asked the and question, they, they how much confidence do people have moving forward with the Patriots? And Skip says it's overreaction since 2000 when Belichick became the coach. They've only missed the playoffs three times, so perhaps it's just overreaction. Uh, days after being called a player's